Well, thousands of people were praying for me here on earth because they had heard this is now remote. This is a remote location. They've heard I've been in a terrible accident. They don't know I've been pronounced dead. Mm. So all these people are praying that I'm going to be okay. And the one man is praying over my dead body. Uh, if I don't know they were praying, I would have told them to stop. Because you've been in heaven, you don't want to be here, even here. <laughs> yes. uh, but they they were praying, um, felt led of the Lord, and of course God said yes. So I am here. But I did come back to a really a very extraordinarily difficult life. I uh, I had um, I'd lost four inches of my left femur. Uh, my left arm wound up in the back seat of the car. My right leg was crushed by the collapsing dashboard. I was impaled on the steering wheel. Had brain damage. It was it was really. Uh, would have been no life at all. I, I did have brain damage and internal injuries, but that's what the man in the car was praying for. And so, miraculously, I don't have those now. Even though Eva's here, she probably thinks I still have brain damage. And, um, you know, sometimes I do too. I, <laughs> maybe it's just age, Bob. I live long enough to get to this point. But I had 34 major surgeries, and I was in a hospital bed for 13 months and then had a couple of more years of therapy and rehabilitation to learn how to walk again. And they told me I would never walk and I would never use my left arm, but uh, I walked up to this, uh, this booth on my own two legs and uh, my left arm is completely functional. So wow. uh, it's a miracle, really, but it was a long, long, difficult experience. That's why Eva is the, the hero of the story, I'm not. Well, and Eva, you actually wrote a book entitled A Walk Through the Dark. And that, I would imagine, is a reference to really the, the walk that the two of you went through. Obviously, God used you in a very powerful way during this time. Just share with us a, a bit about your own experience. Well, it is called a walk through the dark because, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, in this world you will have trouble. And it's, it's, not, an, it's not an if, it's a when. It's, it's going to happen. Thankfully, Jesus says, but I have overcome the world, and so I, I, I can conquer it with you. And that's what I had to learn, that I had to learn to lean into God to help carry both Don, our three children, and myself through this time. The physical injuries were horrific. Uh, there, there, was, there was nothing that could, could really alleviate his pain. It was constant. It was 24 hours a day. I had made the decision to have to put that device on his leg to grow the uh, bones back together to replace the femur. And the question I heard over and over again is, why did you let them do this to me? That was a very difficult question to hear because I felt I had made the right decision, but he he was questioning, and I understand that. He was in a lot of pain. My hardest thing was dealing with his depression because I did not know about the heaven experience to begin with. In fact, it was about a year and a half Hmm. later before I finally found out about that. And so in my mind, I'm questioning, why isn't he happy to be back with our family? Why isn't he glad that he's going to grow old with me? Why isn't he happy that he's going to get to see our children married? Those were all questions. I think they're very normal questions, especially for someone who is a caregiver. And that's why I wrote the book, A Walk Through the Dark, because people constantly were asking me, how did you make it through that? How did you hold your family together? How did you have to go back to work to keep your insurance and take care of three children and still take care of Dawn? and still have a normal life today, as normal as, as the Pipers can have a normal life. <laughs> but uh, we, we, we just felt that it was something that people really could benefit from reading. I didn't have all the answers. I made a lot of mistakes. But yet, I've, I've always told my students when I was teaching school, you learn from mistakes. And so I hope yep. people can learn from mine. So what would you say to those that may be involved in caregiving situations? Maybe they're, they have a an older parent that they are caring for, or maybe someone that has been through an injury or a disease, maybe someone caring for a family member that has a disability, what would you say would be the the guiding principle or a couple of the guiding principles that God has taught you? I had to learn to let other people help me. That was, that was something I, I, I was trying to do it all by myself. I felt like that was my responsibility because as a caregiver, you have so many critical decisions that you're making and and you feel all of that burden on your own shoulders you may have a room full of people around you but you feel very isolated during those times so i had uh to kind of put myself pride aside and let people jump in and help me people who would sit with dawn so that i could take a break that was something that i learned was so valuable 
because when you're doing all the caregiving, your brain gets tired. You're not eating right. You're not exercising. You're you're constantly under stress, and your brain gets tired. So you need to take a break. You take a walk. You take a drive. You you. I go to play the piano. That's what I do. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I pound out things. So that was that that was a very hard lesson for me to learn to let other people help. And then I also had to learn you can't second guess yourself. You make the best decision that you can at the time with the information that you have, and you can't go back to the what ifs because the decision is done. You just have to keep moving forward. You can't waste energy on that. 